Hello, welcome to SportWorks Kingdom Moments. Glad you could join us today. Praying you're having a good Monday. We're we're hitting all kind of heat indexes here today, and it is a hot, dry Monday. And I'm praying for our farming friends that, that I know we need to get a little bit of rain here sometime. Uh, God knows it, and so we just are lifting that up. But again, we pray you're doing well. We are going to finish up chapter two of First Peter today, verses 21 to 25. I'm uh, going to look at, at, again, still difficult teaching from Peter, especially difficult in our uh, kind of current culture and our current attitude of things as, as time has gone on. I don't know that that's always been the case with where we sit as a country, but it certainly is now. And so we will look at it. I, I kind of put it to, to this analogy. Your coach, he or she, knows there's many different ways to get something done. And yet your coach wants you to do it his or her way all the time, period. Is that unreasonable? Is it unreasonable to think that your coach doesn't just want you to get it done, but wants you to get it done the way that he or she wants it to be done? It is their team after all. There's a reason why they were hired and have uh, the term coach in front of their name. Uh, and if it's not the head coach and it's an assistant coach, the assistant coach knows there might be a lot of ways to get it done, but he's got to do it the way the head coach wants it done. And the reality is that, that head coach ultimately has a boss. And the reality for all of us when it comes down to it is, is we all are under the authority of Jesus as a follower of Christ. And yet it amazes me that, that we think we can kind of come to this book and kind of choose what we will or won't necessarily follow and, and choose how we'll go about it and and you know i'm following jesus in my heart i don't actually have to do it right i mean i don't have to really do the things it says it starts to become some of our mantra of of how we operate uh, and, and yet it seems pretty clear jesus said to follow him and therefore if i'm to follow him i should be looking closely at how he does things and however he did things should be how i do things um we, last time I checked, <laughs> Jesus was the one that this book was written for, the one that it was written about. He's the one who redeems us. He's the one that's going to be glorified in the end. Uh, it, it's all about Jesus. He, we looked at another book in Colossians that he's to be preeminent, to be supreme in all that we do. Uh, in Philippians, we're to have the attitude of Christ. That, that we, we can go on through doesn't matter what's written, and we looked some yesterday. We're going to look today when we jump in here that we are to follow Jesus. Jesus suffered immensely on the cross without complaining, without demanding justice, without demanding any of his rights. He laid his life down, becoming sin on our behalf that we might become his righteousness, that we may be clothed in it, that we could then be brought to God and it was only in that that we'd be able to have a relationship with God. There wasn't another way. We don't get to rewrite the script. We don't get to change how it goes about. We don't get to now demand for all of our, what we think, equalities and justices and rights. We, we follow Jesus in the same suffering that he went through. And, and last time I checked, Jesus just really wasn't concerned with trying to make it easier, happy, softer to get large numbers to follow him. If you read the Gospels, he ran off the crowds quite often by, by telling them how difficult it would be. Is it worth it? Absolutely. But, but easy? No. And it's no different in our athletics. The hard work they go through, everybody would love to be out there on game day. But not everybody's willing to put in the work all the off season and all those other mornings you're getting up when nobody else is up and, and you're working when nobody else is looking and you're sacrificing and you're sore and then you're in the training room and you're getting treatment and you're, you're some cases in an injury in a hospital room getting fixed and repaired and going through physical therapy sometimes for up to a year over different injuries to get back out there. Well, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And the fact is that, that there's work to be involved and, and some of that is is, is here and it's here and it's us dying to ourself, believing that the things of this world aren't what are valuable to us compared to the things in heaven, the things that are with God, in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, will, 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 Jesus will set up his reign here for a period of time. It, it will be here. Uh, the authority and kingdom of God in many ways are, already is here. Um, 
But anyway, I uh, got and get myself worked up and go on. So let's jump into the verses. It's not many, but they're powerful. For to this you've been called. And, and we're kind of the, the rest of this letter we're, we're going to look at. And he's got some more difficult things to teach. It's who we were first and, and, and what Jesus has done on our behalf. And, and then that we're to be a kind of a, a living stone, which is the idea of a living sacrifice being built upon the precious cornerstone. And that we're to submit to authority we looked at yesterday. So verse 21 again starts with, For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. I don't think I have to interpret that for you, right? He, he just said, for this you've been called. And it's, it's that we follow Jesus. And it says, because Christ suffered for you, leaving an example so that we might follow in his steps. So guess what? If Christ suffered for us, then we're going to suffer for his namesake and, and to the glory of, of him and, and to help others come to see the light and to come and believe and follow Christ. But But it's... We, we don't get an option here. Because Jesus did this for us, he set an example that we're to follow. Are you following Jesus today? Not did you say a prayer, not do you go to church. I'm asking us to, to ask God to search our hearts. Not judging somebody else. This is you before God, me before God. Am, am I following Jesus? Would anybody look at my life and accuse me of following Jesus? Is there evidence of it? Can it be seen? Do I do things, treat people, love people? Is the Spirit alive in me in a way that people would say, much to the early church that were first called Christians, you, they, they were called that because they looked like little Christ, that they behaved like Jesus. And it wasn't given as, a, as an endearing term. It was just a, a tag that they were given. Would we be tagged that? I know we're in the Bible Belt. We all say we're, we're Christians. Would someone accuse you of being a follower of Jesus? That's our first verse. He's going to continue on it. He, he, Jesus, committed no sin. Neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. So when they began to mock him and say all kind of lies and different things about him, uh, and, and question so many different things about him, spit on him, punch him, he, he did not retaliate. Would that be us? When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. When you feel like you've been done wrong, are you able to, to stop and be silent and take it and just trust God? Or do you feel a need to, to act out Take someone to court. Do something that, that no, you, you've got to get yours. Or, or can you trust God? Really, can you try? I mean, there are injustices. The, the reality, most times people get angry at us. We, we probably deserve more than the anger that they gave us. <laughs> We're probably far more wrong in this situation. The reality is there are Christians around the world today that, that, that get thrown in jail, that get beaten, that have their families torn apart, that lose their jobs that walk 10 miles through the darkness of night to get to a secret place to be able to be with others, to look at this book and to pray together, that to sit for teaching for, for days on end is, is welcomed. They're not looking at their clock after one hour in a church service. They, they can't wait to be in fellowship to learn more about what this book has to say. What Would we be accused of being a follower of Jesus? Can we stay quiet when folks speak badly about us? Are, are we okay with that? Can we just trust God that in the end, God's going to, we're going to benefit so much more in this life after this. I don't need to defend myself every time somebody says something about me. Am, am I okay with that? Most of us aren't. Verse 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Again, do, do we get what he did on our behalf by taking all of that, not reviling back, not fighting back? In fact, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. He didn't call down curses. He, there's a reason why Jesus is the one who went to the cross. None of the rest of us would have gone through with it. We would have demanded the angels come down and fry everybody. It, it would have never gotten that far. 
I doubt we'd have made it out of the garden, let alone past you know, Syphus' house. Uh, we would have demanded some kind of righteousness and some kind of something. Um, we see that in Paul as well when he's led off to Caesar. He, he, he puts off the one, but, but as, he could have gotten free from all of that, but, but it was what he knew God had and he trusted so he could have an audience to tell Caesar about Jesus. And the process led many guards to, to the Lord. And we see that in some of the letters he writes to Philippians and Colossians of how, under house arrest that there were many who had, who had come to believe. Verse 25, For you were strained like sheep, but you've now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. We're told in, in John, he talks about that, that God gave certain ones to him, and they were his sheep, that a sheep knew his voice, and they followed the shepherd. There's no way to be a follower of Jesus, to be sheep and, and not follow the shepherd. We're either the sheep of his flock or, or we're goats, Scripture says. Are, are you one who draws close, digs in this book to make sure you follow the voice of the shepherd? This is hard teaching. Everything in our culture says we should stiffen our neck and fight for our cause and for ourselves. Some of the time is coming where it will be more and more difficult here. Are, are we going to be willing to trust God? I, I, I'm not saying we don't ever push back for some of our rights and, and this and that, but, but I, we looked yesterday that I'm to respect the authorities that are there. I don't have to agree with them, but I'm to honor them. I'm to honor everyone. And then I'm to follow Christ. Well, when we start to put all this together and not just give lip service to it, it, it demands closer examination uh, if i'm on an athletic field and i've got a game plan and, and each day i come in after practice and the film doesn't match up i gotta do something to fix it because by game day i need it to match up to, to that which we want done or i can't really call it the game plan my life either begins to look like god's word as it describes a follower of christ or i have to determine i'm not a follower of christ yeah, i can't have it both ways and I pray that God would wrestle in your heart tonight, that he wrestle in all of our hearts tonight, that we keep coming back to Scripture and not just say, oh, yeah, I believe it. And then I ask, well, have you read it? And I get nobody's hand goes up. Well, how? <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't connect. It doesn't make sense. And the enemy wins in all of that. We, we, we've got to know the shepherd if we're going to follow him. If we're his sheep, we're depending on him and in a relationship with him where we've got to know believe and follow where he leads us. Heavenly Father, I pray for my friends. I pray for everyone listening, Lord, that you would continue to use your word to grab our hearts. Lord, we're not sharing this to be harsh. We're not sharing it to be judgmental. Lord, we want the light of, of your word uh, to be a lamp unto our feet, to, to guide us, to lead us, to change who we are, or that we would die to our sinful self in this world and that we would follow you. Help us see where we're not following. Continue to grow us through your spirit. Con Continue to convict our hearts, cause us to love those and to honor everyone around us, that folks would see you and give glory to your name. And that's what we want most, Lord, that you would be honored and glorified. Help us to be obedient in all those things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all so much. You all have a great night.